This video is sponsored by Epidemic Sound. There is a whole world of audio plugins that you can use to make your microphone sound more professional. In this video, I'm gonna go over my five favorite audio plugins specifically designed for live streamers. We're gonna be covering noise gates, EQ, compressors, even DSs, essentially everything you need to get the best sound out of your microphone. And best of all, all of these plugins are completely customizable to your own voice and still totally free. Before we get started with the video, there are three important things that I need you to understand. Firstly, all the links to every single plugin that I mention are down in the description below this video. Like I said, they're all free to download, so open up the description to find the download links. Secondly, we're gonna be using Elgato's Wavelink software to add these VST plugins to our microphone chain. You can also use OBS Studio to add VST plugins, but at the time of recording, VST3 plugins still aren't supported. And finally, once you've actually installed a VST plugin onto your computer, you actually need Wavelink to find it before it can be added to a channel. To do this, simply open up the Preferences window, then click on the Audio Effects tab and click the Scan Plugin Folders button. All right, boring stuff out the way. Let's jump onto the PC and add our first VST plugin. So what you're listening to now is the Elgato Wave 3 with absolutely no effects or any kind of post-processing applied at all. It sounds all right, doesn't it? But we can make it sound a whole lot better by adding some VST plugins. And the first VST plugin we're gonna add is a noise gate. Effectively, what a noise gate does is it mutes your microphone when you're not speaking by closing the gate, and that should stop any of that background noise from coming through your microphone when you're not speaking. As soon as you start speaking again, it unmutes your microphone by opening the gate again. My favorite noise gate plugin is one called Renegade because it has some really visual ways of being able to understand the exact settings that you're applying to the gate. So as I explained before, you need to head to the description below this video, download the Renegade plugin from their website, and then install it onto your PC and make sure that you scan the folder within Wavelink. Once you've done that, you should be able to find the effect if you click on this little effects button here on your microphone channel, click the plus icon, and then browse to find the Renegade plugin. So the first thing we need to do is actually establish what our noise floor is. And this is gonna be unique to absolutely everybody watching because it's dependent on the environment that your streaming PC is actually in. So what we need to do is be completely quiet and then look at the levels that our microphone is picking up without us speaking. So for me, you can see that it's hovering or sort of around that minus 60 decibel range. And what we want to do is actually set our threshold to around five decibels roughly above that level. So uh, minus 60 plus five, we're gonna set this to around the minus 55, minus 54 sort of range here. And now if we're quiet, you can see that our levels are below that threshold that we've just set. So what this means is that any time that our volume is above this threshold, hence when we're speaking, the gate is gonna be open. But any time that the volume is below that threshold when we're not speaking and it's just the noise of our room, the gate will be shut and therefore not allowing any audio to come through your microphone. We can also here adjust the attack and release times, which is effectively just how quickly the gate opens, how long it stays open, and then how slowly it closes again. Uh, the defaults here are a little bit quick for my liking, so I like to set my attack to around 10 milliseconds and my release to around 100 or 125 milliseconds. The final setting that we can adjust in Renegade is the mix percentage, which is this little dot here you can drag up and down on this gain map graph. Effectively, what this does is it decides how closed the gate is when it is closed. So if you drag this all the way down to the bottom, 100%, the gate will be fully closed, letting in absolutely no noise when you're not speaking. If you want something a little bit more natural, you can set this to around 80, 85%. It is gonna let in a tiny bit of uh, room noise, but it's gonna sound a lot more natural as well. Next, we're going to add some EQ to our microphone chain. Now, EQ will forever be the hardest setting for me to recommend to you because it's so inherently based on what your voice sounds like, the microphone that you're using, the environment that you're streaming and recording from. In fact, even if you and I were sat at the exact same microphone at the exact same studio or streaming space, we'd still want different EQ profiles just because inherently our voices are different. That being said, I do have some baseline subtle changes that I recommend you can use as a starting point but you do need to listen back to how these affect your voice and the bits of your voice that you like and you dislike you need to choose yourself to make cuts and boosts at those specific frequencies so my favorite free eq plugin is one called tdr nova again once you've downloaded installed and scanned that within wavelink we can add it into our microphone chain 
uh, by finding the plugin and we can see it opens up a new window. Now, you might notice that we can't actually see a frequency response of our voice right now and that's just because you need to change this setting here from off to in which is now going to show our actual frequency response of our voice coming through our microphone and then we can apply an EQ to that. So we're going to apply a basic three band EQ to our voice. We actually don't need all four bands enabled here so you can turn off the fourth one and make sure you have the first band selected. We can either make adjustments up on the graph if you want to just drag the nodes around or you can adjust the Q frequency and gain values down here using the knobs at the bottom. So for our first node we're going to add a little boost to add some warmth to the low end somewhere in that 100 to 150 hertz range. For me around 140 hertz I'm going to add a 1 decibel boost and just adjust the Q, the actual bandwidth, the number of frequencies that this applies to, to something a little bit more wide, something around 0.9. For our second node, we'll make a slight cut in the sort of broadcast boxiness frequencies around 400 to 900 hertz, typically for most voices. Uh, for me, it's around 500 hertz, and I'm gonna cut around a decibel and a half here, and again, adjust the Q width just to make it a little bit more narrow so it's only applying to those specific frequencies. Finally, our third node is gonna be to add some clarity. We're actually gonna add a shelf starting around 3000 to 5000 hertz range. So select our third node, change it to be a shelf. Again, I'm gonna start mine around 4000 hertz. We're just gonna add a slight gain here of around 0.8 decibels, nothing too offensive and again adjust the Q value to something around one. Now this EQ is intentionally very subtle because I know how many people are gonna just copy this video blindly and I don't wanna make any massive changes because there's such a variety of different voices out there. So please, like I've said many times, listen back to your own voice, make the changes based on how your voice sounds and how you want it to sound. The next plugin that we're gonna be adding is a compressor, which is gonna make your volume level of your microphone much more consistent. So it doesn't matter if you're speaking at a normal voice or shouting when you get excited, it's not going to be a really unpleasant listening experience for any of your viewers. That's exactly what a compressor does. It compresses any volumes above a certain threshold, brings them back down so that it's more consistent volume wise. There are plenty of different free compressor VST plugins available on the internet. My favorite is one called Rough Rider 3. So let's get that added to our microphone. Phone chain. There are really only three different settings that you need to understand to set up any kind of compressor. Those are the ratio, the threshold, and the makeup gain. The ratio is just how much of a compression is going to be applied whenever your volume exceeds the threshold. So these are commonly two to one, four to one, eight to one, or even 10 to one compression. And the further up that scale you go, the more compressed your signal is gonna be whenever it exceeds the threshold. I typically recommend a ratio of four to one. It's nice and natural sounding while still obviously a applying a compression, but if you want a more compressed sound or a less compressed sound, feel free to play around with this. The threshold, or here in Rough Rider 3, it's called the sensitivity. This is just the decibel level where you want the compressor to start working. So any sounds above minus 18 decibels as I have it set up is gonna start applying that four to one compression. So I recommend setting this to minus 18 decibels or minus 20 decibels, somewhere around there, and it's just gonna depend on how loud you are normally and how much gain your microphone already has. Finally, you're probably gonna require some kind of make up gain because when you apply a compressor you're reducing the overall volume whenever you exceed that threshold so for me I have it set to three decibels you can adjust this just purely by looking at your OBS meters make sure that when you're speaking you're still sitting in that sort of yellow minus 12 decibels roughly kind of zone and then add some makeup gain as you need it just to make sure that you're sitting around that level Next, we're going to add a de -esser. Now, this is completely optional, but I would say, especially for condenser microphones like the Wave 1 and Wave 3, adding a de will reduce the harshness of the S sound, which obviously when people are watching you broadcast for several hours at a time, can be pretty fatiguing. For this, we're gonna be using the T de plugin. So get that installed and add it into your microphone chain. So within the plugin interface, there's really only two controls that you're gonna to need to change. That is the processing, the actual amount of de that's happening, and the intensity. So so I'm gonna start by increasing the intensity just because I know that I like it a little bit higher, something around seven. And then the easiest way to see the processing happening in real time is to hold the S sound and then adjust the amount of processing until you see it start to be affected here on the level. So this is a bit of an extreme example, but I will hold down the S sound whilst adjusting the processing. So what level of processing you end up using is largely personal preference. I think a good starting point is just making sure that a few decibels of harshness are removed whenever you're using words that have that sibilance in. Again, the main changes that you're making here are really subtle, but if you can make any kind of improvement to the sound of your microphone, why wouldn't you? 
The fifth plugin is actually a completely optional one and it's going to depend on how noisy of an environment you're streaming in. I don't personally use it but if you find that even with a noise gate when you are speaking you can hear a lot of noise coming through you might want to use a noise suppression filter. There's actually two different routes that you can go with noise suppression that I would recommend. If you have an Nvidia card and want to have similar results to Nvidia broadcast then Zaymar has actually built that into a VST plugin that you can add. Secondly, you can go down the route of adding a VST plugin based on the RN noise suppression filter, which is also found within OBS Studio. It's really good at removing constant background noise, uh, but it doesn't do any sort of learning of a noise environment. If you do end up needing to add a noise suppression filter to your microphone chain, it's worth noting that you wanna drag this up so that it happens right at the beginning of your microphone chain before your EQ and compression or de happen. So now that you've got your microphone chain set up, here are some bonus tips to really get the most out of your new setup. Elgato have actually added a new audio device to your system that you can use to use this new microphone chain in any different program. It's called Wavelink Microphone Effects, so you can just open up Discord or your game or even something like Zoom, add that as your microphone input, and then you're gonna get the benefit of that full audio chain with all of those VST plugins that we just added. You can also toggle whether these audio effects apply to just your stream mix or also your monitor mix. So if you don't want to hear the plugin effects in your own headphones you can just toggle this within the software if you also own the elgato stream deck you can add the sound deck plugin and then the sampler action actually allows you to sample your microphone in real time and then play back that sample. So if you want to do some quick testing of changing your EQ or any of the plugins that we've talked about, I'd really recommend going down this route of taking audio samples and then playing them back so that you can hear the changes in real time. It's also worth noting that all of the audio effects that we have applied today are actually applied in order from top to bottom and you can drag and drop to rearrange them. Some people like to compress before they EQ rather than EQ before they compress. So feel free to do a bit of research and see what sound works best for you. I would definitely recommend putting your noise gate and noise suppression right at the start though because you don't want to be applying any additional effects to any noise. It's also definitely worth mentioning that effects don't have to just be applied to your microphone chain. You can actually add VST filters to any of the different channels within Wavelink. So I, for example, have a compressor added to my voice chat channel just because I know that my teammates don't have the exact same audio setup as me and I don't want to hear those massive volume changes when they get excited. So I've added the same compression to the voice channel as well. You could also add some something like a limiter to your music channel to make sure that no songs go above a certain volume level. And speaking of music, this video is sponsored by Epidemic Sound. Epidemic Sound has an absolutely massive library of over 35,000 different tracks that you can use for your YouTube videos, your Twitch live streams, your podcasts, your Instagram, your TikTok, all of the social medias. One of my favorite features about Epidemic Sound is the ability to download individual stems for any song that you find. So often I'll be browsing through their library and find a song that I really like, but it's got some vocals in and I can't really have vocals underneath my speaking through a YouTube tutorial because that's gonna be two people speaking at the same time and it won't sound great for you guys the audience that's where the stems come in and i can actually download the individual stems the individual tracks and then layer them and just remove the vocal track from the recording so i've got a lovely instrumental version of the song that i found that paired with the find similar button where when you find a song that you like and you need another song for a longer video for example you can simply click one button and epidemic sound will give you a full list of songs that are similar to the one that you're already using seriously i love epidemic sound as a platform i've been using them for four or five years now way before they were sponsoring any of the content on this channel and i would highly recommend you check out the 30-day free trial thank you epidemic sound for sponsoring this video and thank you guys for watching i'll catch you in the next one peace